Good morning, good morning, good morning, BRCC. Good morning to our Global Faith family. Good morning to all of those who love the Lord. We are glad that uh, God has given us another day to be alive and to just celebrate His name. I want to invite you now, as always, <laughs> to come and join us uh, wherever you are, uh, whenever you start with this uh, live stream, that uh, 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 you, you will give your attention to what God is doing this morning. So, uh, to bless God. Truly, this is a day that He has made. The Bible says we should rejoice and be glad in it. So, yeah, Bruce Arrow Community Church, again, we're here to just lift up the name of Jesus through singing, through prayer, through scripture reading, and we will share the word of God with you today. So, listen up as even as you prepare, uh, um, find in a uh, place in your Bible, Acts chapter 13, the first three verses. We will be spending the next uh, four or five weeks there talking about the church at Antioch. A great example of a worshiping, authentic, truly uh, genuine worshiping community that listens and hears from God and uh, how God used them to change their world around them. So I say welcome to Bruce Road Community Church. May God bless you as we worship and fellowship together today. In Jesus' name, amen.
celebrating our global faith family. Good morning, everybody. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from Psalms 96. And so, guys, before we do that, though, I got to uh, tell Sister Jenny, I was sitting there and I heard her say, you know what? Hell has lost another one. Think about that. Come on, guys. Hell has lost another one. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. And then they say, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. So I want to tell somebody this morning, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. God has given you freedom on this morning. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he has given you power and love and a sound mind. Think about that. He gave you all three. See, power without love is insanity. But he gave you power, love, and a sound mind. So no matter where you are this morning, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Hey, thank you for that. That blessed me this morning. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading is coming from Psalms, the 96th chapter, and it reads as follows. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to Yahweh. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonderful works among all peoples. For the Lord is great and highly praised. I think we say, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of all the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord reigns. The word is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. He judges the peoples fairly. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and all that fills it resound. Let the fields and everything in them exult. Then all the trees of the forest will shout for joy before the Lord. For he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his faithfulness. It says, for he is coming. So sing unto the Lord a new song. Some of you have been singing a song of mourning. Some of you have been singing a song of hurt. Some of you have been singing a song of brokenness. But on this morning, I invite you to sing unto the Lord a new song. Bless his holy name. On this morning, I invite you to praise him like you never have before. On this morning, I invite you to lift up holy hands. On this morning, I invite you to bow down low. On this morning, I invite you to move however it is that the Holy Spirit is, is working on you to move. So if you're in your bed this morning, praise him. If you're driving in your car this morning, praise him. If you are at work this morning, tap your feet, but still praise him. No matter what you have to do, praise him, for he is worthy. Yeah. Mm. He sad. is worthy. Yeah. Yeah. He is worthy to be praised on this morning. And Abba, we exalt you on this morning. We bless you and we love you, God. Father, we say, Holy Spirit, come in this place, oh God. Come into our hearts, oh God. Come into our minds, oh God. Come into our bodies, oh God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into not just this physical place, oh God. Not just these four walls, but Holy Spirit, we welcome you and we encourage you to come into our lives and make a difference, oh God. Change us from where we are to where you would have us to be, oh God. And then Holy Spirit, anoint us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet to do a good work, that which you have preordained and ordained from the foundations of time, oh God. 
And so we say, use us as your hands and feet, O oh Christ. Use us to do what you desire to be done in the earth at this particular point in time. Father, you did not tell us that the way would be easy, but you promised to be with us no matter where we go. And so, Father, we thank you and we honor you, O oh God, that even now you are ordaining and you are ordering our steps. We thank you that even now, O oh God, no matter what comes up against us, O oh God, it shall not prevail. For you are our banner, O oh God. You are our strong tower, O oh God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah Shalom. And so, Father, no matter what man tries to do, O oh God, you still have the final say so. And because of that, oh God, we bless you, we exalt you, we magnify you, we glorify you, oh God, we praise you, we honor you, we give you all glory, we give you all glory, we give you all glory, oh God, for you are worthy to be praised. And we bless you, oh God. And so to my brothers and my sisters, as the praise and worship team is coming up, my brothers and my sisters, I say, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave on this morning for whom the Son has set free. It's truly free indeed. God bless you.
aleluia, 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 aleluia. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. PRCC. Is anybody here ready for the coming of the Lord? You better be ready because Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen and amen. God is good. Uh, he deserves our praise. We just want to thank him for the opportunity we have to be in this place, to bless his name, to worship him. Amen. Thank you. Uh, thank God for the praise team. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the Bible says not by power, not by might, not by the number. But hey, for the, those who trust God and have the presence of the Holy Spirit and allow him to work in and through them, God can perform wonders. Amen. And amen and amen and amen. So we're, uh, we're just going to not waste time, but go to the Word of God. Uh, we're here to, 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 to preach, to teach, and to just learn and see how God will have our congregation, our fellowship grow, and for us as individuals to grow. Amen. So uh, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 13. We've been doing a weekly Bible study in the book of Acts. And as we kept going through, you know, the Lord just revealed some things to me or put some things on my heart to share, with, to bring back to our uh, attention, to help us as we live together as a congregation, as we fellowship as believers, uh, how and, and, and why, why we, we, we do what we do. You know, God speaks to people. God wants to speak to us. God wants to accomplish some things in the earth. And God speaks. He uses the church. That's what we believe, what the Bible teaches. He, he uses the church. He will speak to us as Christians uh, to help us do, I mean, to lead us to do those things that God wants to accomplish. So the Bible says when God really wanted to uh, uh, send some message to, to, to people of our generation, guess what? In the book of Genesis, he went to Abraham. He will reveal himself. He said, Abraham, I'm asking you to leave home. Trust me, believe in me, have faith in me, and uh, through you, I will bless all people of the earth. He said, through you, I will bless all people. So, um, so that's what we want to talk about the next uh, couple of weeks. And so as we start, I just want to ask you this one question. What is your church known for? The church that you go to, the church you were born in, the church you fellowship with, what is it known for? What is it that makes that church stand out in your community? Some churches are known for, I mean, certain things. For example, some churches are known for their musical ability. They have great choir, great orchestra, and that's what draw people to come and worship with them and draw people to the Lord. Other churches are known for their hospitality. Whenever you walk into their space, you know that the grace of God is there. Uh, some churches are known for their mission ministry. Other churches are noted for the architectural extravagant, you know, I mean, you see some buildings and you just want to go in there and you know that God is in that building. But the Bible tells us that God does not live in buildings made with hands. Still, some other churches are known for the social programs. You know, they meet daily needs here in the street. I mean, like Mother Teresa, she was a walking church, you know, in Calcutta, India, living with people who uh, the community felt they were nobody. So let me ask again, what does your church do that makes it stand out? Your church. Your church. And then when I say church, I'm talking about the, the body that you uh, fellowship with, but also the Bible says why? We are the church of the living God. You know, the church that lives in you. When you go home, the church goes with you. You go to work, the church goes with you. You go to Walmart, the church goes with you. I mean, what is that church noted for? Love, compassion, uh, uh, so, 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 so where do you invest most of your resources as a church? So I said, come with me, let's um, uh, examine this church in the book of Acts uh, 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 and see how God used them. Look at the daily activity. So in Acts chapter 13, it said, Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets, there were teachers, uh, Barnabas, Simeon, the Niger, Lucius of Serene, Menem, who had grown up with, uh, brought up with Herod the Tetrash, and saw while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work to which I have called them. Luke says, So after they have fasted 
After they pray, they place their hands on them and send them off. Send them off. The church at Antioch is a great example of a church that spends time before God, a church that takes worship seriously, a church that seeks God's mind, a church that wants to know the will of God, a church that wants to obey God and do God's will. They will not do anything as a congregation unless they believe with all their hearts that God wanted them to do that. And I pray and hope that's what we do. We will not do anything unless we believe that this is what God wants us to do so that people will be brought into the kingdom. The church at Antioch. How did that church get there? You know, when I read the book of Acts, it's a, it's a historical account of uh, how the gospel moved from Jerusalem to the rest of the world. So it is always good I like to kind of go back and examine something. How did that church get there? How did your church get to where it was? How did BROCC come into existence? So uh, the, it's good that you ask. In Acts chapter 11, as we read, it says that in verse 19 of Acts chapter 11, uh, now those who have been scattered by the persecution that broke out, broke out against Stephen, when Stephen was killed, they traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Look at verse 20. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, they went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. And the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. So that's how the church got started. You know what? Prosecution broke out among the people uh, uh, in Jerusalem when the early disciples were there and Stephen got ordained to the ministry. He was teaching that day, and other people didn't like it, so they, they killed him. And when they killed him, political leaders began to what, come against the church. So people fled for their lives. Fled for their lives. So the church at Antioch was an established church. That's the first thing I want you to note. It was an established church, and it came, the establishment came through what? Problems. Problems come our way every day. The problem of the time of persecution. I don't know why you've been somebody said, but if you live too long, guess what? I mean, you will walk into a problem. If you live too long, either you are coming out of problem. If you live too long, you've seen somebody come into a problem. Either it's fire, some disaster, it's earthquake, it's death in your family, it's Ebola, it's uh, coronavirus. Who knows what else might come from the crisis? Just the, the stress of raising children. But for this particular situation, it was persecution. And so they fled for their lives. So think about the place. How did they select Antioch? Well, they said people went to different places, Phoenicia, Cyprus, and they were what, sharing their life story. You know, as they fled, they got to town. Somebody said, hey, where are you from? Oh, we're from Jerusalem. What are you doing here? Welcome. Let's have some tea. Oh, I mean, we're here because persecution broke out against our people. Who are your people? We are believers. We believe in Jesus Christ. And because of Jesus, they want to kill us, so we ran for our lives. But where is this Jesus? He laid him on heart. And as they kept telling that story and praying, guess what? All the people turned to the Lord. So they selected the place. Antioch. Antioch was a thriving, great city. It was an influential city, a commercial center. If you think about Antioch, think about uh, uh, um, um, somewhere in the east, the name just flipped. But we will come to that. And so, um, um, but still, where the east and the west connect, that's where Antioch was. Antioch was a queen of the east, as I said, because of the beauty of the surrounding, the importance of its commerce, and the strategic location on intersecting caravan routes between the east, west, and the north. And so, you know, it was a strategic place for people to uh, tell the story. So, the problem of the time of prosecution, Christians were being prosecuted. The selection of the place was just wherever God led them. So when you go to Walmart, you go to work, wherever you find people, tell them about Jesus. Uh, yesterday, my wife and I went to Sam to kind of like uh, pick up her prescription. Well, just before we got there, uh, the pharmacy was closed. Well, so let's turn around and let's walk around a little bit and just enjoy the beauty. We're not buying anything. We're not buying anything. Don't get tempted. We're not buying. But we met a couple. They were buying mattresses and bed. And so we started a conversation. Hey, why are you buying? It's on discount, blah, blah, blah. And we told them about Jesus and about church. And I said, that's what God sent us here for. So let's look at the purpose of the planters. 
Prosecution broke out. They fled. Some went to different places, but this group went to Antioch. Why did they plant a church in Antioch? Look at uh, uh, verse 19, again of chapter, of chapter 11. Basically, Jesus has said to us in Matthew 28, wherever you go, make disciples. Wherever you go as a believer, make disciples. It doesn't matter your age. You can be in the fifth grade, in the fourth grade, in the tenth grade, in the eleventh grade. You know, when you know Jesus, your mom prays and God's helping you to make good grace and to stay out of trouble, that's an opportunity when your friends want to drag you into trouble, tell them, say, I'm a believer. Hallelujah. And so they had a purpose to represent Jesus wherever they went. So the Antioch, I mean, the church at Antioch brought together people from different places and they planted the gospel so that the people who believe um, um, will come together, come to a place of worship. It says in uh, 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 chapter 13, verse 1, they were in prayer. They had teachers. What did those teachers teach? They taught the word of God. So come on back to chapter 11, verse 20. We look at the promise of the word of God. So you look at the, the, the problem of the time, the selection of the place, the purpose of the planter, but the promise of the word of God. What does the word of God say to us? Those of you who read Isaiah 55, 11, say it will never return to me void. My word will always accomplish its purpose. And so when these believers went wherever they went, verse 21, to the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed. But guess what? When you come on back up to verse 20, some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Serain, they went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about Jesus. And whenever you tell the good news about Jesus to people, you are sowing seeds. Jesus said, well, those of us who believe in him when we are sharing our testimony, we are like the farmer who goes out to sow seeds in Matthew 13. And the seeds are scattered. Seeds are scattered. He said the enemy will come to devour some. But guess what? 25% that's a possibility. Somebody will stop and think about what you just shared with them and they will turn to the Lord. So the promise of the word of God, he said his word will never return void. And so when we are doing church, the word of God should be central. The word of God should be taught. The word of God should be preached. The word of God should be meditated upon. The word of God should be studied and shared with other people because it is that word that brings power to change our lives. Pulses like water, it cleanses us. Uh, Jeremiah says, like hammer, it pounds us like fire burning in my bones. The word of God has power to give life. He says, like a two-edged sword, it will tell you what you need to do, tell you where not to go. Somebody said, sin, sin will keep you from the word of God, or the word of God will keep you away from sin. Because the more you read, it will reveal yourself and life around you. Now you have a choice. The Bible said, the wages of sin is death. Oh yes, thou shalt not. But the Bible also said, you know what, you can do this. I can do all this through Christ who strengthens me. So it is good to study your Bible. Read it. What purpose, what good is it for you to have the Bible in your house, carry it in your hand, and you don't even spend time with it? I guarantee you, the more you read the word of God, your confidence in God will grow. So the promise of the word of God. But also, what helped this church to get established was our, um, the presence of the hand of God. Verse 21, chapter 11, Acts. The, the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. I mean, when they say the Lord's hand, I mean, God uh, accredited this church. It was accredited by, by God through signs and wonders. Remember when the early disciples started? There were many signs and wonders. In chapter 2, verse 43, many signs and wonders. 5 and 12, many signs and wonders. When you read Acts chapter 5, it says, even when Peter walked, his shadow, when his shadow fell on people, they were healed. It wasn't Peter the fisherman doing that. It was the hand of God. When Stephen goes to, to speak and preach, said so the hand of God was upon Stephen, he worked signs and wonders. In chapter 6, verse 8. In chapter 8, verse 6, Philip goes to Samaria to preach, 
It said the hand of God was upon him. There were signs and wonders in that city, and they brought great joy. So I want to let you know that when a church is really worshiping God, waiting on God, serving on God, you mean serving God, you will see what miraculous. The miraculous power of God being demonstrated in the midst. If God is not moving, if God is not healing, if God is not delivering in your midst, you need to question why you are in that congregation. The same God who led Moses to the Red Sea and part of the Red Sea is the same God who took Jesus from the grave. It's the same God who walked through Peter. It's the same God we have today. His power has not changed. He can still heal today. So yeah, be our sincere. We believe in prayer that heals. We pray intentionally for God to move in the lives of our people, to heal the sick, to, 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 to help those who have uh, mental illnesses, that God will heal them, that God will heal from the crisis. That God will set financial situations straight. That God will turn somebody's life back to himself. So the presence of the hand of God was very, very, very important in the life of this church. The church at Antioch. The Bible said it worship. It was the church, so it was established. The presence of God was there, but also think about the faith of the believers. These people went to worship regularly. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, What? Let us not forsake the assemblies of ourselves together as a manner of summit. Some people think church is just on first Sunday. Uh huh. In traditional churches, what to do communion? First Sunday is what Holy Sunday. That's when I must be there. I come one Sunday and then I'm gone. You know, COVID has helped us to really for God to identify true worshipers. You don't have to come to church to worship God, but the beautiful thing about coming to to church is what we fellowship. We get to see one another. We got to encourage each other. We get to know how you are doing. You get to know how am I doing. We get to assign people responsibility to put our gifts to work. Hallelujah. So that's what it's all about. The, the faith of the believers. So Antioch was an established church because of all that I just listed. But another thing that happened is that um, the support of the mother church was very important. The Bible says in Acts chapter 11, verse 22, news of this reached the church in Jerusalem. You know, these believers left Jerusalem. News went back. It took like three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. You know, people had to walk and all that. News reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas. That's a good thing. You know, when the Jerusalem people heard that the people in Antioch had accepted Jesus Christ, they were so happy. You know, that Jesus had been preached in foreign lands. And what did they do? They found one of the best in the midst. Barnabas, the one who's able to encourage. Barnabas, the one who gave us this sermon. Barnabas, the man who has courage to go to other places. He went there, and the Bible said he saw when he saw when he when he arrived. He saw what the grace of God had done. He was glad and he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord who had called him. Look what it says about Barnabas. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. A great number of people were brought to the Lord. So just like Stephen and Philip, good man, full of the Spirit. Why didn't they make Barnabas a deacon when they made Philip a deacon? But the people, the apostles asked for seven men. Seven Seven and God chose them. And you see, when God chose Stephen and, and Philip and the other people, Barnabas did not get upset to say, You know what? I've been here before. Why didn't y'all bring me in? He stayed and did his work. This is when oh, I, I love this part of the story. You just have to wait on God because what God has for you will come. When God needs you, He will pick you up. It was just the right time when the church needed Barnabas, needed somebody to go long distance. Bet Barnabas said, you know, I'm glad they didn't choose me first. <laughs> I would have been gone like Stevie. But that's when God brought him in. So the mother church supported that church. And I want to declare and share with you today, BRCC will not be here without our mother church, Rooster Road Baptist Church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We were 17. 17. 
in uh, Southern Baptist Mission will support a church plant that has 50 members. And they will write some check, give your pastor starting salary, you know, to help, which they did for me here at Bru uh, Brewster Road Community Church. But it was because Brewster Road Baptist Church adopted us as a, as a, plant, a baby church. Their membership covered our membership. So it is important when you are a church and you are planting work, you are doing ministry to get actively involved. Support that church financially. Send people to help out. You know, if they don't have a drummer, send somebody. If they don't have somebody to teach, send somebody from your congregation. And when you do that, the kingdom of God will multiply. And then, one more thing I will share about this church. As an established church, It was led by mature believers. Again, we come back to Barnabas. Barnabas was a mature disciple. He knew how to teach people, to tell people the essence of the gospel. And then look what, what happened. Verse 23 of chapter 11 to 26. It said, he was a good man. Yes, we read that. Full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people believe. So when a lot of people believe, Barnabas said, this is beyond my you know, my ability to handle. I need help. Where can I go? He prayed to God. God said, remember the, the man that you brought to church? So he's not far from here. He's in Tarsus. You know, he's maybe what? Two days walk, three days journey from you. So, verse 25, then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he said, thank you, Jesus. He brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church, and they taught a great number of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. The title that we bear today, when you go fill a paper and somebody says, your religion or your faith, you say, I'm a Christian, this is where it started from. Barnabas and Saul teaching the people, and they were behaving like Jesus. Behaving like little Jesus. That's what Christian is all about. It means little Jesus. People who behave like Jesus. You insult them, they say, I'm leaving with God. You try to prosecute them, they are praying for you. You say evil things about them, they love you in a way. Jesus said, when somebody slap you on one cheek, turn the other also. They, they were like, I mean, these people behaving like Jesus. And it is when we behave like Jesus that the true power of the indwelling Holy Spirit that lives in us becomes a reality to other people around us. So even as I speak this morning, my heart goes out to my, to my, to my, to my, to my beloved Jalena West O'Brien Learning Center in Johnsonville. A few months ago, February, the buildings came down. And last week, Monday, when I just told you, know, after this celebration at the church, I have time to rest. Monday, another yellow machine went and just leveled down everything else. And the kids who are in 12th grade, they don't know where they're going to go to school. Sometimes you think evil has power to prevail. I refuse to say that today. God is still on the throne. Take heart wherever you are. That's not the end of your life. The earth belongs to the Lord. God will do what God has to do. Amen. May God bless us. But that's why I love the church. Because since I came to know Jesus, I allow God to be God in my life. And uh, he's in control. Amen. And 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 amen.
If you say it, we believe it. If you say it, help me sing now. If you say it, we believe it. If you say it, if you say it, we believe it. If you say it,
have peace and to have a father that loves you. And so if you are unsure this morning or if you strayed away, I invite you to say a prayer with me. And it's most gracious and heavenly father. Lord God, forgive me for I am a sinner. Father, I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my saving grace, as my savior on today, oh God. Restore me, heal me, make me new. I trust you with my life for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And if you prayed that prayer with us, we invite you to reach out and let us know. If you are not, um, affiliated with the church family we invite you to continue watching us if you are affiliated with the church family reach out to your pastor to um, a neighbor to someone that can continue to pray with you and shepherd you throughout this journey and so we thank you we bless you and to our global faith family we say enjoy the rest of your week you are blessed to be a blessing amen amen Thank you.